I've said it many, 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 many times. I have nothing left to lose. I have nothing left to lose. I have no reputation to be mindful of. I have nothing left to lose. If everything leaves, I'm just out here in this field, but ass naked. I'll still be the richest man in the world. Fully satisfied. You cannot take from me what I have. That is truth. I am truth. The things you see around you, they're not truth. They are that which we get to play with. Their energy that we get to actually play with, mold, shape, create, and have fun with. But when that energy field of creation around you begins to dictate the terms of your existence, now you are no longer the one that has been given dominion over all things in heaven and on earth. But the heavens and the earth are actually exercising dominion over you. To have dominion over all things in heaven and on earth does not mean you give it to a government. You don't give your dominion to a government. It's kind of like the Israelites begging for a king in the Bible. They were begging and begging for a king. And so I believe it was Elijah, right? Samuel. Samuel. That's right, Samuel. Samuel goes, and he's talking to God. The story goes like this. Remember, there's no truth in a story. <laughs> but the story goes like this. I know, I like throwing out little bits and pieces just to challenge your mind, right? The story goes like this. He's talking to the Father, and God's like, you don't want a king. He's like, I know, but they're begging for a king like they're begging for a king. God's like, you don't want a king. If you get a king, if I give you a king, here's what's going to end up happening. They're going to rule over you. They're going to enslave your children. They're going to charge all taxes to you. They're going to, they're going to literally make slaves of your sons and your daughters. They're going to rape your land. They are going to take over everything. You don't want a king. Israel's like, no, no, no. We want one. Give us a king. Samuel throws his hands up. Fine, we'll give you a king. And so then God appoints a king. You realize sometimes you'll get exactly what you want, even though it's not the best thing for you. You know why? Because you've been given dominion. God is not a genie in a bottle. That is a far off distant place that if you cry out to him enough, the body, bottle drops down from heaven. You can rub it a couple times and out, poof, here comes the genie and gives you the three wishes. This is not how this is. This maybe is this the idea that happens within some religious systems, but this is not reality. You can create what you want. Governments have no dominion. Money, the thing that everybody's working so hard for, isn't real. If you ask my kids what is real, if you ask my kids... So I'll tell you a story just to give you an example. I, I oftentimes, it's funny to me because oftentimes I will, uh, <clears throat> oftentimes I will, uh, I don't know if my kids are paying attention, but then I'll have these moments when I realize they're full on paying attention. They're hearing so much and my kids are so free and we don't train them or teach them with law. And so they're so free. They, they can come to us and talk to us about anything that they're, they're mostly unashamed. They carry very, very little body shame or any kind of shame or guilt. Just, they're fun to hang out with. Um, Micah's such a blast. He's 13. He was harassing Austin and I were having a one-on-one -on -one maybe a month ago, and, and he was harassing my daughter, who's 10. And, I mean, he's harassing her hardcore, okay? And, um, and so he's, he's riding his bike right on her back tire and trying to rub, and she just wanted to go ride her bike by herself, and he's rubbing her back tire, you know, with his front tire on his bike. And she's like, stop it. And she kept coming by saying, Dad, tell him to stop. And I said, Riley, what I say to all my students, I said, Riley, he's a gift to you. 
It's helping you learn how to not be annoyed by people. You can treat him as a gift and learn a lesson, or you can treat him like he's your enemy here. And I promise you, if you do that, he's going to keep going. And she was like, no, just make him stop. And I was like, you're not even listening to me. So Micah still goes around doing it. And he's like, I'm a gift to you. I'm a gift to you. <laughs> and now he's letting her know verbally that he's not only rubbing the tire, but now he's allowing, not letting her know that he's a gift. And finally, I was like, all right, Micah, I was done. I wanted to just talk to Austin because we were having a one-on-one. I said, listen, I said, Micah, uh, that's, that's enough. I said, listen, here's the thing. If you end up wrecking her, she ends up having to go get stitches or something. You're paying for them. And Micah says to me, he says, I don't care. Money's just paper. <laughs> <laughs> and he's heard me say a million times, it's just paper. Just paper. Digits and meaningless paper has no value. The only value that that paper has is because of your belief. You believe it has value. You think that the government has established the value of a piece of paper. The government has not established that. You think that the economy and the way that they're running the economy uh, uh, changes the value of that paper, how the stock market fares changes the value of the paper. But, but what they're not teaching you is that you, each and every one of you, are choosing what that value is. And if 51% of America, we'll just use America as an example, or New Zealand, or Australia, or wherever you're from, if 51% woke up one day and just decided, you know what, I'm never spending money again, I'm not spending any money, it's not real, I'm going to just grow a garden. I'm going to just live free. The, the economy would shut down overnight. And you would return to a system of love and of value and of sharing with your neighbor. Everything would shift and change. You have the power. You think you've given it to governments and then you've been, and then you've spoon been spoon fed the religious system of those governments to convince you that this is actually a godly thing, that it's some sort of godly thing that is taking place. Governments are some sort of godly thing. No, no. If you just look at the scripture, God continued to tell them, you don't want this. Not one time through the scripture does it say, this is godly. This is supposed to happen. I'm just using the Christian scripture right now, the Bible. Does it make sense? So what is real? If the government and all that's happening there, they're just dealing in shadows. They're dealing with things like money and economy, which isn't real, which is completely based on your belief. And the value of those things come and go and shift and change. What is real? If the tree outside isn't real because you've conceptualized it, and we can cut it down and then it becomes firewood. And if the firewood isn't real because we can burn it up, then what is the tree? What is real? And if all these things around us aren't real in the sense of that which is, then why have you allowed them to so impact your existence? Drive you insane, stress you out, cause anxiety, fear, frustration. So what is real? The word truth in the Greek, aletheia, means reality. That which is real, reality, is unmovable, unshakable, indestructible.
it doesn't change with your beliefs. People get into religious conflict with other religious systems. I have zero conflict with any religious system. They might have conflict with me, but I have none with them. Zero conflict. I just love them and bless them. We're one. We are one. God bless them. But the, the conflict that takes place within religious systems is over the, the battle and the struggle is over what is truth. As if you have to prove what is truth. Or as if you have to convince someone else of what is truth. If that which is of truth is based on your belief, then yes, you must convince them. And then everybody would look just like you. Isn't that wonderful? No, not so much, huh? I've said it a million times when an atheist comes to me and says, I don't believe in your God. I say, I don't care. Because I believe in you, whether you believe in me or not. He believes in you, whether you believe in him or not. It's irrelevant. We've only convinced ourselves that we must believe certain things because we've convinced ourselves of a judgmental system a judicial judgmental system that if you don't believe correctly, you're in big trouble. Any religious system that places the emphasis upon what you do is just that. It is a religious system of behavioral modification. I'm going to save you a bunch of tithes and offerings. Go to your local bookstore, go to the self-help section, and just pick up a book. It is no different. The only difference is you will spend a whole lot more money on tithes and offerings than you will picking up the self-help book. Oh, I know I'm going hard tonight, huh? It's a challenge? All right, I hope not. I hope you guys are hearing me. So what is real? Reality is that thing that's unmovable, unshakable, indestructible. God does not need your belief. God does not need your belief for him to be real. People say, well, yeah, but there's this cosmic battle going on between God and God, between God and Satan. And because of the cosmic battles that are taking place, it's important that you believe, because if you don't believe the right thing, then the other, uh, the, the, the evil side will win over and, and really impact and, and cause you to suffer or whatever. You've heard this story? There's a scripture that says, there's only one God, one Father, one Lord, one Savior, one baptism, one faith. It goes through all this. It's amazing to me how... People can say there's only one God and he is the authoritative God. He is the authority and then create a battle in which there is another source that's capable of battling with this God. It's capable of putting up a fight with this God. It's amazing to me how people can say that the work has been finished. Hebrews even said it was finished since before the foundations of the earth. And yet we're still fighting. What are you fighting? I'm here to let you know what you've been fighting. You've been fighting yourself. Yourself and yourself has been fighting. 
the whole time, your true self has been at rest. There is not one thing that I can add to you and not one thing that I could take away from you. I can add nothing to you. When we understand what is real, we are able to no longer allow that thing that is not real to dictate how we feel. The vast majority of what really makes people feel crappy is not real at all, is it? There's no truth in the story. I want you just to say that. There's no truth in the story. There's no truth in the story. Who am I? What is my purpose? Is there more to life than this? Ecstasis Institute is relaunching this fall, providing students with the opportunity to explore the depths of who they truly are. An in-person or online institute where people of all backgrounds come to discover truth beyond any religion or philosophy. Awaken with us to your true divine purpose, being. See your vastness, that you are both nothing and everything, the Christ. Realize that you are life itself, one with God, one with all things. We offer three paths of study with Silas Valentine, a mystic teacher and mentor who for the past 20 years has been guiding students into their awakening. Choose from one of two general studies paths, or if you really desire to dive deep, participate in the mentorship path where you will receive one-on-one -on -one guidance and mentoring from Silas, as well as weekly classes. To find out more information on how you can participate, go to ecstasisinstitute.org. Your awakening is waiting.